The Backdoor GA Podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steed Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by Morris Brosnan of the Irish Examiner and current Michal Brannock's footballer Sean Denver to look ahead to round one of the Galway Senior Football Club Championship. Uh, the action gets underway this weekend and some massive games already to look forward to. Games will be taking place across Friday and Saturday. And just in case people are a bit confused around it, we have rebranded uh, the pod. So it's now uh, known as the Maroon White Pod, no longer known as the Backdoor GA Podcast. All content and podcasts and everything is still available. It's just a rebrand of the logo and all, just in case people are a bit confused or anything. Sean. Just coming to you first, um, from your own experience as a as a county player, going back to your club now, because for a lot of these players, it's 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 a long season for them. Can that be a bit of a challenge going back to your club after an inter county season? Um, it would be. Um, one of the probably difficult things is that you're just after finishing. Uh, well, usually, well, you'd like to think it was a high, but usually a low after losing, um, if it was a quarterfinal or um, at whatever stage goal we got to. So, you know, you wouldn't have much time that you'd have to pick yourself up and go straight into the club. So that, that was probably the most difficult thing from going from such, you know, a low from finishing. Um, and you're really in, are in a bubble. Um, with the intercounty scene in terms of you know you're seeing this, the same lads all the time you're training with each other you know you, you create a great bond with the sponge um, and now that's not to say you have a great bond with the club lads it is great to go back also but it's probably one of the difficult things is to kind of pick yourself up and go again but look um, sometimes it's a relief also you know because um, it's, it's a different environment probably the pressure isn't as much um, in that environment and um, now it's slightly changed now um, in terms of club championship would have been still going on in the season during the county uh, season. A lot of the time, you know, we could have had maybe one or two games in championship in May. Um, so now with the split season, um, you know, I'm sure some of the lads got, you know, a bit of a break. Um, you know, Galway are out of championship now a few weeks. So I'm sure they got a bit of a break. They, maybe they got a chance to go away. Um, on a on a small holiday and and to recharge their their own batteries and you know tackle the club season so you know there's you know there's good things and bad things I guess but look it's it's it is great going back to the club I always really enjoyed it my time going back and um, seeing the lads you know Monday Friday Sunday and you know giving the championship a good go together like at the end of the day the club is where you start they're they're your original friends who you grow up playing football with as a young lad so um yeah, I always love coming back um, to the club. Just with that, Jay, Sean, you mentioned the split season there. Is it working? Do you enjoy it? Is there more clarity or could there be alterations made for you? Well, probably no. Like, so I'm, I'm looking at it as a club player now. Um, so I never experienced it as a county player. Um, but, um, you know, as a club player, it is good that you have the certainty and that you know a championship is at these dates. Um, uh, you know that, and then it's every two weeks after that. Um, so um, again, ideally, you know, we've been training a long time, probably. So it's it, it is hard because you know you you want to be kind of you're building up for championship, but but there could be a you know a twelve or fourteen week build up to championship. Now it's great to have the league also, and you know there seems to be um you know a good. Um, in terms of every two weeks, we had the league also. We had a little bit, bit of a break, um, you know, around eight, nine weeks. Um, and we still have another two weeks. So ideally, I would have loved to be starting this weekend. You know, pity we're, we're not up senior just yet. So um, we won't be out this weekend. Um, but, you know, I would have loved to be able to start this weekend um, maybe that bit earlier, um, especially considering now, again, at the start of the year, they make the master, master fixture plan. So it is probably hard to... You know they're um, probably guessing that Galway will get to the the All Ireland final, so um, I'm sure they kind of push out the fixtures because of that. But you know, I, I know there's a lot involved in terms of how to plan um, the year ahead. You know, but just looking at it as a club player, I, I would have preferred prob- uh, possibly to be started um, that bit earlier. And you know, you want to be playing football, you know, in the summer months um, rather than if you know if you're going to the later 
end of the year and that you're still in championship, you know, and the weather change and you kind of want to be, you know, the dry sod. That's why all all footballers really want. Um, so maybe that two, maybe two, three, four weeks extra uh, summertime ball would, would be uh, beneficial. But look, it's easier said than done at the same time. How are you finding it, Mars? You're obviously involved in the Berna backroom team this year. Uh, I'm not really, to be honest, but uh, um, I, I, I I find it great. Like I, I, The only change, I think I said this the last time I talked to two, Paul, the only change I'd make is uh, I think the league should start maybe two weeks later or get rid of the semi-finals and just do two up, two down. So if you came back in, I just think it's a huge difference getting boys back in maybe mid-February versus mid-January. On the same team, Sean is talking about there from the ground you're playing on from a ball perspective, training in, in the muck and the rain of, of January. I just think that extra month would give you a bit of leeway. I think the league would be better off if you just had a two up, two down versus the semi-final systems that we, we saw this year. So that's a slight change. But more, like broadly, I yeah, I love the, the current system. Like from a set perspective, this time of year is is amazing from work. Like you just think about, you know, I was I worked at All Ireland Hurling Final last week. We did a live event for our own podcast during the week. We've got an All Ireland Football final this week and club champs are starting as well. So it's just I, I love this time of the year. I think it, it syncs up perfectly. There's maybe one or two tweaks, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be majorly critical of any of it really. And is a stats role you're involved with Berna? A small bit, yeah. So it's more sort of oh, like a lot of what we would do uh with the with the club now is kind of trying to get as many people involved in different capacities as possible. So and to be honest, like if I was if I was filling water bottles, I'd happily do that as well. So I do a small bit. Uh, purely that, just a small bit of stats and stuff that I wouldn't, I'd necessarily have to be there with work. You know, it's hard to be there as in presently there every single week. So I could do a small bit of that. I can still play my own. I can still play junior football this year. I'm actually I'm playing junior uh, D C football as well this year. It just seems to have lost yeah. Um So we should find tonight. So I can just try and help out in. It. Can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you now. You just you just went there. Yeah. So sorry, I gonna pick up from where I was. Yeah, yeah the junior C. That's where you're stopped there. So because the <laughs> a real glamour time. When yeah. are we doing a preview for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but but yeah, yeah. So there's just a lot from my own my own perspective. It means I can I can still drive on at work. I can help out the club in any way that I can. And when I'm around, I can I can also play a bit of ball too. So it works nicely. Yeah, obviously, uh, we're here previewing uh, the senior action. There's going to be two games on Friday night. Um, so you have uh, Michaels and Dunmore McHale's in Tune Stadium on Friday at half seven. And um, well, at the same time in Beer Stadium, you have Mike Cullen and on uh, Friday night. Um, so basically, here, lads, we'll go to the county champions first, Mike Cullen. Um, they're obviously placed facing on Spidale. Now, my Colin, it looks like they're going to be without Peter Cook, Sean Kelly, Jared Daverin, and Daniel Cox uh, this weekend. But Sean, like there's still there's still so much depth in this my Colin squad, even without these players. You're still thinking they should probably have enough for on Spidale on Friday night. Yeah, that's where Michael and I are at now. You know, when they won their first, Frank Fox, you know, was getting over the line. Um, and you can see their strength and depth really last year, um, getting their second Frank Fox. So um, winning it last year with the same group, you know, similar group of players. Um, so it is their strength and depth. You can see the success of their underage really coming through. And, you know, when you look at a team like Mike Cullen, so they have such a strong base now. You know, if they get one or two players every year, they're always progressing. They're always getting better. You know, they you know they have the the experience of the likes of you know David Wynn and um, you know lads like that around, and then they have younger lads, um, you know like you know Cox coming through, and and then look, you know you can just see the Kellys uh, alone, you know see three brothers at, at such a at such a high standard. Now you know of course Sean Kelly would be a loss for any county team. You know Sean Kelly would be a loss for um, Kerry or Dublin if he was playing for them this weekend and he couldn't play. So. You know, he's a huge loss for a club, um, but I do feel, you know, they, they do have the strength and depth. Um, and even for themselves, you know, because it's a group, a stage, you know, they will want to give lads chances, you know, younger lads coming through. You know, this is the time really to, you know, to give lads 
um, a few chances. Maybe in the first round, they want to get, you know, make sure they get the win so they're not under pressure. But at the same time, you know, you got you to gotta give some of the young lads coming through, you know, a chance at this level to see, you know, league, you know, is all well and good. But this is where it's at now. Championship is where the football is going to be properly played. <clears throat> Teams would have been holding maybe a few things to themselves during the league. Um, so again, we're going to see, you know, the real teams out, the real tactics, and I'm sure Mike Cullen. Now, at the same time, one thing about Spiddle, like they do, you know, I, I've experienced playing Spiddle on many occasions from underage growing up, and you know, they got the better of us in the um, in the county finals. Uh, is there is is their biggest challenge this year not having been on Oli and Liam O'Kelly? Yeah, again, so like when you look at the, the difference between probably the two teams, like, you know, Mike Cullen with their strength and depth, they can probably, you know, replace um, the likes of Sean Kelly um, a bit easier. Um, and then maybe Spittle wouldn't have the same strength and depth. But at the same time, they do have some young lads coming through. Um, and, you know, um, one thing that Spittle will always give, to be fair to them, is, you know, a great heart. And, you know, they'll never give up. And, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll get into Mike Cullen's faces and, you know, I'm sure that they'll be saying to each other during the week that, you know, they want to stay in the game, you know, with 15 minutes, 20 minutes left, um, you know, keep it nice and tight in the first half. You know, and then, you know, if they're in the game with 10, 15 minutes to go and they push on and, you know, they'll have the fitness and the strength to, to push on. But, you know, that's the main thing that Michael and don't kind of, you know, get the upper hand in the first half and get a foothold on the game. But it's going to be interesting. It's always a very interesting, the first round of championship. Um, and even the team sheets, you know, who's around, who's not around. You know, you hear rumours of who's, who's gone maybe to America, who's not available, who's injured. All these things you won't really know until the first round. So it's going to be really interesting. Morris, uh, someone you had on your own podcast this year, Johnny Maloney from Offaly, obviously transferred in um, to my column. What's he going to bring to them? Oh, Paul, like, uh, so I, I wasn't sure where Johnny would play when I heard about this transfer first. Um, I think I actually broke that transfer on this podcast <laughs> after the county final last year. Um, um, but yeah, so that, I wasn't sure where he was going to play. Like, you know, he's, he's actually played full forward for Tullamore previously. He was obviously a, a centre-back for Offaly. And then I went and watched the my Cullen Carraro relegation playoff, final game of the league. And, you know, my Cullen had their heavies back. Like James McLaughlin came back in. Johnny Maroney was playing. Uh, Owen Kelly, uh, Neil McCahey, they all came back for, for that game. And... John only kicked a screamer on his left foot from the sideline, basically, in the first half. And you think, wow, this guy's going to be an exceptional forward. And then he kind of fought around the middle and started claiming kickouts. And you thought, this guy's just going to, he's got free reign. So he's a huge, huge addition for him. There's no point in saying otherwise. Um, they kind of, they started that game slowly enough. Virgil O'Shea was really bright for, for Garo. And then they just lined McLaughlin, Jared Averin, uh, Johnny Maloney across the middle. And you're looking at these three monsters who are all really good in the air and started cleaning the mouth and just I think Sean is sitting here on the head there you know in terms of the, how my Cullen have viewed this year the fact that they were, had a big long campaign last year they were in the depths of it to a, the semi-final against the Glen they filled the lads back slowly in the league you know you saw a lot of uh, probably a new a couple of new faces definitely in, in the early portions of the league and then they filled it back in a couple of the heavies for that game and even you know they played junior championship last weekend and McLaughlin played that game as well so they're just getting minutes back into the lads who are getting back fit um, and I think they, yeah, they're playing a the long game here. They're playing nicely. They're looking to maybe peak down the line. So I think, just to answer your question, there's no getting away from it. He is, yeah, he's a colossal addition from. Where do you see him playing? Uh, I think, so I was thinking about this during the week. I think they could do what they were doing, which is let him play six, but he's, or let him wear six, but he's not playing six. He's kind of floating as nearly a third midfielder and let David Wynn hold the centre the way he is. Um, and just have him coming on to ball. I don't see it. So I was thinking, would they try him inside? And the more and more I think about it, I don't think they will. Like they had uh, Desi inside that day as well. And they actually even at times, Jared Avern went in to the edge of the square too. But I think that I could see him coming out the field. He, he, he's, he's also there. He's very vocal on the pitch, not in a, a negative sense now, but I mean, he, he was an on field organizer. Kind of remind me of, of Dave Wynn in that sense as well. Like I could see him having mm -hmm. a huge impact that way. So yeah, I could see him. Somewhere are in there in that kind of middle eight bracket, which which they have, and, and they you know, they get such a punch of lads coming onto the ball. You saw it last year with with obviously the two Kellys, like they get such a punch with lads coming from deep. So he could just he could be another fairly frightening addition in that regard. For Spiddle now, for the perspective, Sean, like you know, you would have played them in the past. They they really are 
up against it this weekend. Donald Farger is obviously back in here in a joint manager role capacity for on Spidale, but how how can on Spidale within their own camp feel here how they can get out my column? Well, look, as I said, they'll, they'll be telling uh, themselves, you know, to keep it nice and tight, you know, stay in the game. But at the same time, Spittle have some, you know, fantastic players, some young young lads. I, I, I've noticed that Anthony Olai is back now also, yeah. which is a huge, huge addition to them. And, um, you know, it's one of the things that maybe Spittle were struggling with um, lately has been injuries. And even last summer, you know, that, that they had a good few injuries. Um, but the only thing is, you know, you know, they're still senior and when you get injuries as you know sometimes clubs there's some years that you're just unfortunate injuries so that pushes maybe young lads to play sooner than expected but in the long run you know that can be beneficial and you know you have you know they have fantastic players like Limo um Canela is definitely a player to look out for you know even even in a in a Galway jersey um every time I've seen him I'm very impressed you know he's very accurate um he's very good on the ball very fast um and you know I know that they, you know, Liam O'Callaghan, Finn O'Leary, you know, again, fantastic players who won't be involved, but I'm sure they'll have maybe looking at other players to, um, you know, to get involved. And, um, you know, you have Kieran O'Leary, another young lad, um, you know, again, great on the ball, um, can take a score. So what they'll want is to try to get, you know, as close to their first team as possible, keep it nice and tight. Um, and then, you know, coming down the stretch, you know, if they're within a point or two, you know, they'll start, you know, to get a bit of belief. I think that's the main thing. They have to believe that they can beat Mike Cullen. And I no doubt um, with Donald Fartha, um, you know, he, he was um, a selector when I was um, uh, with the minor team with Galway uh, years, years back now. So I know how, you know, how good Do how good Donald is um, in terms of organising. And, you know, Spittle will be very organised. They'll be well set up and they'll have a plan. I don't doubt that uh, for a second um, for Mike Cullen. And as I said, you know, you know, they'll be hoping that they keep it nice and tight. And you never know. Look, it's the first round championship. No one knows where they're at. Um, and, you know, Spit will be hoping, you know, to start their season positively with a good... Uh, they'll be looking at the performance first and then hopefully the result. Yeah, but it, it, it probably still does just feel like in that one that um, my column with their depth and experience might just have enough to edge that one in Pierce Stadium. Morris, the other game on Friday evening at half seven, um, St. Michael's against uh, Dunmore McHales, who made their return to the senior ranks after winning intermediate um, last year. This game, to me, feels like it could be one of the standout games of the weekend. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I suppose it's, from a Michael's perspective, you, you, you know, there was an element of maybe a, a slight missed opportunity last year, I think, that they, um, you know, I, they, were, they were definitely capable of maybe taking that, that extra step and it didn't just come. Now, I suppose just going back to the team about players being available or not, um, it sounds like Tiger Manny is off to Australia. I'm not sure if that has been confirmed or not, but um, but I think he so now maybe he'll be around for the, the early portion, but uh, the word on the street, as they say, is that Tiger might be gone. I think that's a huge loss just on the team, Paul. Of uh, not to, to go backwards here, but just on what you were saying about on Spittle versus McCullen, I think for teams this weekend and a lot of teams, the if I was to pick out like the crucial thing, the one thing you have to do, you have to. Your own kick out, you have to get your hands on the ball now. You just have to nail that. That's what, if I was from an on spit out perspective, that's the thing you're looking at with a team like McCullen with all these monsters. I think the way football has gone now, once you get hands on the ball, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to maximize the play, you keep it, you get your shot off. Scoring ratios are going up and up, even in club football. So you, you have to, just your point blank, you have to be able to get hands on ball on your own kick out. And a lot of that will come down to goalkeepers. There's a real emphasis now on goalkeepers on being able to get that. That kick off and Tig is excellent at that. Like Tig is he's so calm, he will, will take his time. He can, even when there is a press on, he'll be able to get it off short if he needs to. He's got an absolute boomer when if it comes to it too. So if he was to go, I think that would be uh, a huge loss. But just yeah, on the game itself, like from a Dumbo Kale's perspective and all the positive press that come on last year, I'd say they just bounce into this championship. Um, I'd say it'll be a right good crowd to this game as well. And from a, a Michael's perspective, there's a there's a fair degree of continuity. I was actually I was reading Billy Costa an article in the, the Tumor Herald yesterday. I think of the 33 teams in intermediate and senior football in Galway this year, 24 have had the same manager, which, geez, I don't remember that in my lifetime, that degree of continuity. I think it says a lot about where Galway football is. It's, it's a good thing to see. Um, but obviously, one of those 24 was is Michaels with, with Colin Tumman. So, uh, yeah, I think they're, 
filled in nicely and uh, I, I can't I have to say I cannot wait for this game I think this game could be as you say an absolute cracker yeah, but even Brannigan obviously stood in the States for Michaels, Matthew Reddington in Australia. So it kind of does somewhat maybe even both kind of losses out there. Um, Sean, you obviously would have seen Dunmore last year in intermediate. The way they was went all the way to that all Ireland semi-final seemed to gradually improve game by game last year as they advanced. Yeah, and, you know, they have um, some great... When I'm looking at the Michaels and Dunmore game, you know... You could see, you know, the last few years, their underage teams have been very successful, you know, competing in a, you know, winning a and um, different um, grades. So, you know, I'm sure it will be two very young teams out and it's it, it could be a great game, great, great spectacle in terms of, you know, it's the first game for a lot of these lads. Well, actually all of them um, for Dunmore uh, up senior. And sometimes when you're starting off, you have that bit of fear, fearlessness you know, um, to go at a team. And then similar to Michaels, you know, they, they'll have a lot of young lads coming through um, and, you know, they might have that fearlessness. That's the thing about, you're probably, when you're in a system, the older lads, you can often just get too bogged down by the system and everything, you know, is too careful because it's, that's what comes with experience sometimes. But, you know, I love when you see a young lad coming, coming through the ranks because they do show that bit of fearlessness, um, you know, getting on the ball. They're not afraid to make mistakes. Um, and it's kind of getting that... Um, to, to again suit the team in terms of again sometimes they can give away the ball too much at a at a certain uh, level you know when you're growing up so you do you do learn a lot and you have to learn quick that's the thing a lot of these players over this weekend you won't have much time to adapt and who adapts quicker um, and done more uh, you know they're 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 thereabouts for years and in intermediate and. They're like one of those teams that it could suit now going up to senior and unleashing some of their, um, you know, uh, uh, talented players. As I said, look, the, probably um, Eamon Rannigan being uh, away in America and uh, Matthew Reddington kind of even each other out. But like they do have other uh, players that I'm sure um, that will kind of stand up and, you know, be counted. But it's a very interesting tie um, and it's probably a hard one to call also. But I, if I was kind of looking at it, maybe I'm kind of pushing towards... Um, done more, you know, sometimes coming up from intermediate, you, there's a positive energy around the group in the club um, and, you know, they might want to push on from that. So it's going to be an interesting tie uh, nonetheless. There's one forward um, on the done more ranks, Barnes, that's really exciting. Jake Slattery had a really good year for the go under yeah. 20. Yeah. Really good year last year for done more as well. Um, like even looking back, he did score some amount of goals in that intermediate Uh run last year where they went all the way to coming back up to senior but like he, he's, he's a forward here that could could light up this club championship Yeah I remember the in Tune Stadium when they played the Sligo 20s and uh, just the second he's one of those players literally a left prime player that gets in the ball and people immediately kind of expect um, end product yeah I, I, I from a I think there's a lot of 20s Paul this year when you're looking just across the board who you would expect to have huge campaigns with their with their club, like the scope is definitely there for for that. Um, I know we've talked previously about about Sam O'Neill, who was a player that I was really encouraged to see with the with twenties. But yeah, I think from like Jake kind of reminds me small, but actually of ironically of Eamon Branding in, in that he will do the the dog work if it comes to it as well. Like he will absolutely come back into his own half and get on ball if if the if it's required effectively. And I suppose you know just go back to the team of players being away. I think Eamon is in New York, so he definitely can't come home until the rule with. The, their New York is slightly different to the rest of America. He can't come home until they're out of championship. So it could be the last stage, very similar to what happened last year, actually, for Michaels before we, we see him back, um, which is, again, is another uh, fairly formidable loss. Yeah, I'm not sure what the story with Boyd Costello is as well. He was in Chicago. I'm not sure will he be back this weekend or what's the story there. But like with that as well, Sean, it's, it's been progress for uh, Michaels year on year. Um, league semi-final this year in Division 1. Quarter final last year, as Morris was mentioning, there they, they probably feel like it was a missed opportunity last year, and it it does feel like it's it's vital here for kind of Michaels to get off to the perfect start, but it's also vital for John Moore as well to get off to the perfect start, particularly when it's a group of five rather than six here. Yeah, and again, it's kind of one of those games you often go like yeah, both teams will fancy their chances, both teams will be happy with, to play each other in the first round. 
Um, and, you know, if you look at, my, you know, Michael's, I'm not sure I could be corrected here, but I think they have the youngest manager um, in Cullum Tumman. I think he's something like 33 years old. Right, yeah. yeah, so um, again, I'm sure like that they seem very organised. Um, everything I've heard from the camp in terms of anyone I know, like they, they've had great things to say about Cullum and in terms of he doing, brings, you know, the team together and, you know, you know the trainings and he's, you know, he's very modern and stuff like that. So, um, uh, again, you know, that could be another element, you know, how the teams would be set up. Um, so, you know, it is going to be really interesting. But as I said, both teams would be happy, you know, to, that this is the first uh, game and, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a tight game. And I think both teams are really going to go for it. So, uh, if you're to call it, Sean, who are you going for here? Um, just because um, Dunmore, after going up, that positive energy, um, and you know, I know both teams are missing a few players, but um, and again, it's very, it's, it is hard because you really don't know who's, you know, who's injured, who's not. You hear rumors, but um, just with that kind of, I think it's going to be a very tight game. But because with that, you know, promotion, you can often see that jump or that positive. Uh, energy around in a group and you know they, that they bring it um into the, the the first few rounds of um uh, senior so you know i'm going to maybe by a point or two done more and mars michael's me michael's my Mike, and my colin in the other fight night game yeah we'll just go to uh saturday's games now we'll, we'll go to group c seeing as we're in uh just talk there about michael's and done more obviously in uh group c the Group C game is on Saturday evening. It's between Montpellier My Law and Clare Gaul. Two mistakes have the bye um, this weekend in that group because it's a group of five. And um, that's the game Saturday evening. It's going to be streamed as well. Um, and it's taking place in uh, Tune, Tune Stadium. Boris, here is uh, Montpellier, who probably feel they were kind of caught in the hop uh, last year in that semi final against um, Mike Cullen and Claire Galway then feels that they ran Mike Cullen um, so close uh, last year as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I think from a my value perspective, that game just, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's just going to be lined up for them and it kind of slid very early and, um, you know, like I, I I remember watching the start and you were thinking, geez, even from a matchup perspective and you know, John Daly was running over to Sean Kelly and you're thinking, this could be just a box off his game but within a couple of minutes it just felt like Montpellier were taking on water, so um, yeah, like I think from that perspective, going back to the team of players being away, um, and a huge loss for Galway this year. I think it's gone under the radar how big a loss Patrick Kelly was for for Galway. Like I just the form he was carrying last year, the goal threat that he had throughout the club championship to not have him on the intercounties in this year was uh, as a killer. I've heard nothing about an update yeah, on this else. Yeah, him and Michael Daly working the way back to fitness, but I'd say going by what is written this weekend, it'll probably be too soon for them this weekend. I'd imagine. Yeah, I I think that's um yeah, not insignificant, I would say. And then yeah, as you mentioned from a Kagala perspective, uh speaking of kickouts, I saw uh, young McGrath playing a league game this year. Jesus, kickouts are like cream. Like he is they are just they've got probably three senior goalkeepers in their ranks there that you would have no fear in in playing. As you mentioned, they you know, they went hammer tongue stride for stride with uh, Mike Cullen last year. Um ironically, I think given their a young Group that will, I know this sounds maybe counterintuitive, but I think that will stand for them. Like the fact that they, you went toe to toe with count champions, there's from a belief perspective, a lot of people look at Kirk and think they're in many respects have been nearly a sleeping giant. You know, when you look what's happening underage in schools, there, um, it just feels like they have the raw materials to be an absolute super club in, in Galway. So, from their perspective, I think they will again become a huge boy. This would be some statements from Kirk I think if they were to win this game and yeah, throw down a marker. Um, and I think they definitely have to it in their, their locker to do it. Yeah, Conor Campbell's obviously out. Jack Lynn misses this weekend, um, being in America. I'm not sure what the story with Nathan Granger is either, and Conor Flaherty are both uh, were in the States over the summer. Yeah. Uh, Sean, how, how do you see this un unfolding over the weekend in Tume at, uh, on Saturday at 6? Look, you know, Mount Belly have built a team over the you know the last few years that they'll always be there thereabouts. Like they're 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 one of the top teams. Um, you know, along with you know um, Mike Cullen, you have Curfin, and you know even have Tune the last few years knocking on the door. And then they're probably there's another tier of teams there that are trying to break into that tier. And you you put Clare Galway there, but again, the thing about Clare Galway, um, 
they've we, we've been talking about their underage it feels like for a long time now <laughs> you know, they, they've, they seem to be winning um underage for the last good few years and but now there you know it comes a time that that has to translate and it doesn't necessarily you know um always translate success underage doesn't translate into the senior team um all the time but what happens is you need to make that breakthrough and if that's a breakthrough at least get into a semi-final if not a final um and seeing you know putting lads under that environment of pressure in a final or semi-final stage and um while they you know they only lost by points to the eventual winners my column after being i think they were five or six points down you know they did rally um but i think it is it's one of those years it's a big year for claire galway um, and they'll be definitely aiming, you know, to try to get to at least a semi and try to get to a final and see, um, you know, anything can happen in a final then. Um, but again, as you said there, you know, who's who's there, who's not missing, who is missing, who's injured, who's away. Um, and the same thing with Mount Bellew. The only thing about Mount Bellew is, you know, they have form, they know how to win tight games, they know how to win. Like even in the group game last year, I think they had a crazy amount of scores between all the games they played. Um, now, I think they have more a, a more difficult group this uh, summer, so it might be more challenging. Again, maybe that didn't help Mount Bellew before the Mike, Mike Cullen game, that they won their game so easily in the group stages. Um, sometimes you do need a challenge, you need a tight game, um, you know, to be able to, you know, be successful in the latter stages in the quarterfinals, semifinals. But, um, you know, it is an interesting group, you know, you have... Uh, tune there also so you know there's no um, easy games there um, between and look any any of those teams be delighted to get out of that group and at the end of the day there's going to be um, one or two good teams there that won't make it through um, and that will be in a relegation uh, dogfight and that's one thing that you don't want to be in trust me so it's going to be interesting Don, do Montpellier my law have a point to prove because there probably is teams now that are maybe saying that there's two or three teams ahead of them at the minute. Do you think they'll kind of be using that as motivation within their camp? Uh, yes and no. I think they still believe that they're in the, like there is a top tier in the senior championship. And as I said, the, the previous teams I mentioned there, um, and you have teams that kind of come in and out of it maybe. Like it's a big year for Salt Hill also. Um, after, you know, again, pushing Mike Cullen so close last year, you know, it's almost the second year syndrome. Will they be able to do it again? Um, like you have teams like Mike Cullen that have been consistent in fairness to Montpellier they have been consistent over the last few years getting to you know semi-finals and finals um, so I would put them you know you have Montpellier um, Mike Cullen and Curfin as the consistent teams and then you have the teams like Tume, Saul Till Clare Goway that are trying to break through more consistently year in year uh, getting to semi-finals uh, and finals so um, I think they will have a bit you know a bit to prove um, but at the same time, I think they will be, you know, they, they will be full of belief that they can and that they have the squad of players. And again, you talk about strength and depth. Mount Bellier are another team with strength and depth. Um, and they have a team that's like, you know, it's a good age profile. They don't have, I don't think they haven't had anyone that's close to retirement just yet. But they have a, um, you wouldn't say that they have a very young team also. But I'm sure that they have one or two players coming through every year. Um, so again, strength and depth will be huge. Um, and you know because they're missing a few players at the start um, I'm sure it'll give a chance maybe to uh, one or two new lads coming into the panel to see what you know where they're uh, at in terms of senior championship Stan Moran returning from injury too for Bombay is a really really significant um, addition that's the Group C game on Saturday evening um, Morris if you to call this one uh, I'd say I, I will I, for the purpose of this. I'll presume Conor Campbell is his shoulder, isn't it? That's yeah, the shoulder, that's very yeah. serious injury. Yeah, so I he definitely won't be back. And uh, if Conor Farty isn't back either, I think those two are they're just two massive losses. As I mentioned, like I I do think young Amy McGrath and goals is uh, is a special talent, and uh, I wouldn't worry about Clegory in that regard. But it's just more so what Conor brought in attack last year actually is uh, is a killer. So if those two are gone, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say my value. Sean. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, I think Mount Bellu would just be too strong in the first round uh, and just with their strength and depth. Quarter past four, the game that's on before that in Group 2 uh, is between Salt Hill and Fairfield. Game of the weekend here. Uh, that's live streamed as well with the other game uh, in June on Saturday. Um, this just wets, wets the appetite straight away here, Mars. Yeah, just a 
oh, just a cracker. Like this, yeah, it's a pick of the bunch for me. Uh, I cannot wait to see how both teams go. So I think we're probably in a similar bracket to my mind to my current in that maybe they, they played the long game during the league, got a bunch of new players or were trying out different things that have done on the midfield. Um, the most interesting one for me is Ty Karen, uh, the former Perler who's playing centre forward for, for South Hill this year. He played the league final actually against us uh, at wing forward. Um, hasn't played a huge amount of football over the last couple of years, but there seems to be a lot of belief that he'll come good. And I mean, anybody who watched him as a hurler will tell you he's he's a freak athlete. Like the guy can just cover grounds uh, all day. So it'd be really interesting to see what he brings uh, to the mix. And then you've got a couple of young players that they're filtered into the youngest clan playing inside as well. So um, the big again, just going back to it, I hope it's, it feels like a team. We're going to say it a lot when we're previewing these games, but who is available this weekend? You know it. I know. Uh, you know, Kyle and Tom have got over to the States for a while. Um, so it, it's a you know, until we see team lists, it's very hard to preview specific matchups here. But I think Tom was back, but it's unsure on Robert Finnerty and Carl Sweeney. Um, that's what it looks like. Yeah, we'll find that on, on, on Saturday. Um, but yeah, just broadly, like from a South Air perspective, you've got all that. You've got Carl Finn, who again, like an absolutely stellar league campaign, this very talented group of nine under 19s who've kind of been filtered in fairly seamlessly. I think. From a manager perspective, Kevin Johnson does a lot of credit for the way he he went about the league, you know, as well as approaching it for what it is to use it as a good opportunity to the blood pairs, which seems to have come to fruition. And then you add in on top of that that the the goal half back line it looks like are all back now that Kieran is, is is back fit. Dylan McCube all counts that the hamstring injury is is not as a concern anymore, and Liam Silk is back. So that is just like that is enormous. That's there's no getting away from that. To have the three of them back in the mix is is absolutely massive. So. Uh, yeah, to, you know, does does a game need much more anticipation when you consider both the players who will be there, the players who might not be there? I just think yeah, it's it's probably to be a big one. Yeah, with that showing, like even we we're doing power rankings earlier on, um, Barry Cullen did have Saltel at number one, so that was interesting to see. But Perfin are coming. Like, who was two? Who was two, Paul? Who was who was number two? Two, two was my column. Three Perfin, four my Bay. Whoa. Yeah, so um, I'm sure that's going to cause some debate. But even that could, <laughs> that could be all changed this weekend. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be the team of it. But as Morris said, Kerf in there, feeding their experienced players in with the 19s, the Patrick Egan's, the Brian Coggers, Roy Donlans, these lads coming through. But they're still going across their business so quietly this year. Yeah, and. <sighs> I'd say of all the fixtures, if you wanted a team or if a team wanted to kind of make a statement win, it, I could, I, I'd feel it would be both Curfin and Salt Hill in terms of Salt Hill saying we're not going anywhere um, after last year, after, you know, getting to the final. And then Curfin saying we've been always here and, and we're still going to be here. Um, so, again, as you know. Well, such a half back line to come back, like, you know, any county team would be delighted to have a half back line in terms of Curfin. Um, and then, but also, you know, the Salt Hill do have, um, you know, the likes of, you know, Daniel Flaherty and Carl Sweeney have their own kind of runners. But again, it is, it's probably one of those, it'd be easy, it's easier to do um, um, uh, previews on county teams because, or county games, because you, you generally know who's going to be playing, who's not going <laughs> to So, of all, you know, especially in the first round, it is quite hard. But, you know, I think a lot of the teams, like those teams, Curfin and Salt Hill, they will want to build strength and depth, but at the same time, I feel like a win for either team here will really give confidence for the rest of the summer and to be able to push on. And if you get a win here, then you know, looking at they'll be looking at the other group games maybe to try out a few lads. But it's really this one that they I, I feel like they target and bit and that it's going to be a statement to win for either um, even this early in the in the championship. Um, but like Liam Silk being back from New Zealand, um, and Kieran Malloy, you know. It's 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 huge by uh, pluses, and look, I'm sure even with the 19s and the under underage lads, you know, it's going to be serious. Even that training, I could imagine that training. If you can only dream of a training session, uh, like Corfin, in terms of you can almost just on Sunday play 15 on 50, and it's, that could be more beneficial than playing a friendly down the road against another team, um, because you know that's I'm sure that there's plenty of bite of lads trying to like. At the same time, you know, there's going to be lads there that, you know, um, were playing the league, they were playing well, and they're not going to be impressed if Liam Silk just comes in and takes their place without, you know, so they're going to fight 
um, you know, and, and I'm sure that there's going to be a bit of bite at training and um, it will be, you know, serious, um, serious competition for place in Curfin. And then, you know, for Salt Hill, you know, can they get one or two more lads? You know, maybe that's what they were lacking last year, a bit more firepower and uh, to take the pressure off um, uh, Tamo and Rob Finnerty. Can they add, you know, a few extra scores? You know, they will be well set up. Um, and can they just add that extra bit of firepower, one or two players coming through? So it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, think about Salt Hill, you know, Ty Cairn, you know, I didn't I didn't know, you know, I just heard that there. So, yeah, so that's the thing about Salt Hill. You, you, you could have, you know, a player from that hasn't been around for a while that plays and um, again, that's been training the last while and could add something. Um, you know, I know they had, you know, a few years back, you know, and Gavin Duffy even played for them. Like, you know, so there's always that kind of form that, they can have a player or two coming back because just probably with the population they have, you know, people coming and going um, and, you know, underage and everything. So it's going to be a fascinating tie. Um, but I think uh, personally that, you know, Curfin, they have, they've, they've been in form all season. I think they're going to want to continue that. And I think they're going to, going to make, they're going to want to make a statement from, you know, the first game, um, not only to Salt Hill, but to, you know, to all the teams and seniors. So I think, you know, if I was going to pick a team, I'd, I'd pick Curfin. Marza, just, just before we do move on for this game, it feels like for Salt Hill this year, if you're looking at the likes of Charlie Power here and Evan Nolan and these kind of players, that it's it's a significant year for those players because you're expecting them to kick on a year and even Matthew Thompson as well. Yeah, Matthew Thompson, I was about to say, Ev Murphy as well, obviously. Uh, you know, you'd, I think that's where they would hope maybe invest a bit more in getting, uh, getting the most out of their, their firepower up front. Um, and then on top of that, then like Paul, they're you know they're just on their setup. They're such a well set up team. Like they, the Vels kickouts are probably the most successful in the in the county, and he's up against the man who's going to compete against him for uh, that title in, in, in Barney as well. So even from that perspective, it'll be uh, it'll be a really interesting game. I think that's what Sotil, what Sotil would love to happen, rather than uh, it's just <laughs> for one of those players to take a, to take a jump, like one of you know it, it could be a it could be an Ever Murphy, it could be Donald Hunt is a guy who I was so impressed with last year. I just think he. Uh, he's a really intelligent player. Like you know, as he's running, he's always impacting the ball too. He's never, never, ever headless. He's an incredible burst of speed. He's very, very good over his head. I know he was exposed to the development panel this year as well. So he's another guy you could even maybe see to take a jump. And just a final thing on this too. So I think of a lot of lads who uh, I think would back themselves to have an impact in the county. When you look at someone like Daniel Rafferty, who comes in, in his first senior year, and from the moment he, his first game is down in Casabar against. Uh, Mayo and he's just he looks at, at home like he looks totally at ease and uh, and th another thing about Sotil as well is that all of those lads when you see the impact they have coming back into the a senior setup they're so well conditioned athletically like you look at John Maher did it look like he missed a day of intercounty football when he came back in as well so I, I wouldn't underestimate that Johnny O'Connor is on their, their backroom team um, yeah. and, and I definitely wouldn't underestimate the, the impact of someone like that being involved there as well so yeah I think they're they're primed I just I also think that Carfin are uh, uh, are also in such a good space that they're coming off the back of that league campaign as well. I, I I'm gonna go for Carfin for this game, but it's the game that I'm I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, even there's there's a little rumor going around of a particular Santa transfer, but we won't say until, <laughs> uh, until it's uh, confirmed or anything. The first. Uh, we, we we don't want to be the ones to spread the rumor, but there is a uh, rumor going around. Um, it'd be interesting over the next few weeks. If something uh, does unfold there. I might add a bit more firepower, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all of, yeah. No, we won't we won't give away anymore. <laughs> People will know straight away. But uh that's uh group B. Um Uktaran and Kazran is in Kenny Park at quarter past four. That's a group B clash as well. This is kind of similar and somewhat Sean to Kind of St. Michael's done more a clash, both sides of kind of fancy winning this one and kind of imperative when you look at these two teams. They're in a group with Sawtell and Kerr Finn. Third is going to be such a battle for a, a good few teams in this group to really try and progress and like imperative for both sides here to get off to a good start. Yeah, so is a little more there you're on about, is it? Uh, Uchtarad and Kashran. Oh, Uchtarad and Kashran. Um, so yeah, again, like, you know, there will be certain fixtures in, in this in these groups that they'll be looking at and they'll be like, 
you know, really targeting. Um, look at Uchtarard again, a team. Um, and from what I hear, um, I think there's an, another player coming through to their ranks, um, you know, the transfer that will add a lot. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Carl Dunhu from the Offaly 20s, but he's actually out with a crew sheet at the minute, so it doesn't look okay. like he's playing right. a lot okay. this year. So yeah. that's that'll be actually a big loss. That, but again, like with Walter Ayers, it's one of those teams that you know have a lot of young lads coming through for the last few years, and they're probably coming to the stage that like they, they'd be aiming to do something, um, or else they kind of might be stagnating a small bit and um going a bit stale. So they will target this game. Um, you know, both teams will look at it as to get two points on the. On the board, um, it'll be interesting to see. You know, you you have the likes of Enda Tierney and um, you know, in midfield there, Keane Monaghan, Eric Lee. So they do have, you know, they see serious players out there too. They will be set up also. Um, you know, they do have a. Uh, we played them in the league. Um, in um, in were you the, impressed with them this year when you played them? Yeah, I was impressed. You know, they will they will be defensive. They they they'll sit back and they'll try to hitch on the counter and they they leave one or two lads, you know, um, with a bit of pace up front, you know, to try to hitch on that counter. And then you know they do have good scorers also. Um, so again, it's going to be very interesting. You know, you do have Matthew Tierney also. So again, we've <laughs> like Spiddle up to Ard, uh, broke our uh, our own hearts uh, a few years ago in the intermediate final on penalties and. You know, one of the things I learned from, you know, that day was, you know, I can't give Matthew Tierney any chances from freeze or from any, anywhere. Um, so, and that's so vital in all these games over the weekend, you know, to have a, a serious free taker, I feel, can be the difference between losing and winning. And just the way lads have developed now over the years in terms of free taking, like it's almost you can't give away a free within 50, 50 yards. Um, and, you know, we learned that the hard way ourselves, you know, with someone like Matthew Tierney coming through. So, again, with players like that, you know, you'll, you'll always have a chance. They will be well set up. Um, and then, you know, in terms of Carlos Stran, you know, every time I've ever played Carlos Stran uh, over the years, one thing I found, you know, with them, you know, they're 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 tough. You know, they'll, they'll go in hard and they, you, you'll always know after that game that you, you had a tough game. You'll be... You know, bruised and and sore after, but um, and they're always in good physical shape. Um, so a, again, it's it's a hard one to call. Both teams would probably be happy to get each other in the first round. Um, but you know, if if I had to pick, you know, I think you know Uchtarard. I think you know they're 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 on a bit of a high also, and you know they have a bit of momentum. So I'm sure they they'll want to push on. Yeah, we're even a little bit early doing the power rankings as well. We've had Sharon like uh, Morris. The loss of Keane Darcy to Ballyball and Zedendas, uh, it's a huge, huge blow. And then Oshin O'Brien has transferred back to Navin O'Mahony's. Alan Morris, uh, obviously, did a cruise sheet last year, unsure whether he'll be back. Like They just seem like significant losses, but that's why it kind of feels like it's it's huge for Kanshran to get off the start this weekend. Yeah, Keane Darcy kicked three points for her. Probably more than two weeks ago in the in the league, and you're just think, thinking, looking at that, and if he's have, could have that sort of back there, can you imagine what he would do? But as you say, he's he's obviously transferred. Um, he played the first round of the league, and by all accounts, left pretty, uh, pretty shortly after that. He's based up in Dublin for the year, though. Um, and then I suppose on the flip side, uh, do we, is Matthew Tierney back? Well, unsure whether Matthew Tierney or Ryan Monaghan are back this weekend, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. with every team like that. But yeah, I I I, yeah, I appreciate that's the that's the question a lot of teams. But I I think that would be be absolutely massive. Like I remember Udrard played the first round of the championship last year. This weekend last year they played Cara Finn and it was you know real kind of contained job. Like but you know bringing a lot of players back. Niall Lee uh, up by himself and trying to to break as I say on the counter, but. Corfin did what they do and just control possession. We're really kind of disciplined in, in the way they attacked. Um, and I think that's a challenge for, for Cardiff Hatton as well. We played them in the league semi-final this year, um, but I wouldn't read really that into that result because they had a, a man sent off after after 10 minutes. Um, Tommy was actually sent off as well in the same year. I'm not sure if there will be repercussions for that for championship. I genuinely haven't heard. Um, um, but yeah, from, from that perspective, yeah, like there's a there's no getting away from the fact that that is a challenge. I suppose from an neutral perspective, I think for, and Sean maybe can attest to this, for particularly for kind of smaller clubs, in, or West Galway clubs, like any silverware, you can say league is league, but silverware still carries a huge degree of importance. Um, like that Division 2 title was the first senior title I think Bernard have ever won. You watch the and 
the way they celebrated that Division 3 title, I, I was delighted to see them kind of acknowledge it for what it is. And I think that gives, like, that'll give a real lift to a team, regardless of, you know, they did that without, as, as big and odd as, as Matthew is, they did it without him. Um, so I think from their perspective, they, they'll be coming on just a wave like that. That I think that's really powerful. We, you mentioned Adam Murphy being back there as well. He definitely knows what he's about. So, uh, yeah, you'd you'd be optimistic that Uchara can kick on again from what we saw last year. You think he's back in the of Mars, do you? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I from a Canada Champ perspective, like they're uh just to go back what Sean said, like they're ferociously determined side. Like I, I you know, you have a huge degree of admiration anytime you've come against them. But uh, I just think the trajectory Uttarad are on right now that they're yeah, they're flying for, for this particular for the first round, I think. That that's a huge thing this weekend, Paul. How you start off for a lot of teams, it could be the difference between, you know, fighting relegation and a qualifying. There's a lot of this I I you know, not, not to challenge the power rankings now at all, but I do think maybe that uh, I think you know the likes of Mike Cullen are, are kind of up there. I thought Hill and um, Bellew, that that's a firm bracket, and then there's another bracket of teams trying to get there. But there's a mid tier of teams who could, this year could go either way for them, and so that first round is I think it's just so important. How that how that goes could like it could shape your season. Just on a point there, Sean Myers touched on about the importance of silverware and momentum. Like obviously we're we're going to talk about it with Bear now and they're they're coming into the championship if they're coming in. But can can that momentum can you can you build that from league into the championship? Uh, yeah, and uh, again it's like it's nothing to be sniffed at. Like, you know, I like I've I, I've played uh, well, I don't know, up to 16, 17 years now of adult football, like, you know, and I can count with one hand, sadly, you know, how many cups I have. Um, but, you know, I still remember the ones that we do have, um, if that was between the Comertas or the league. And, you know, those years, um, if anything, what I feel like, it brings the team together. Um, and, uh, you know, when you win something, it doesn't matter what it is, it just, it's, it's a bond that you, you have um, with that team that can really benefit uh, the latter stages and coming into championship um, you know and I, and I remember one of the most successful years we had uh, we won the Comortes uh, the local Comortes and we got to actually to the, the national Comortes final under Kevin Walsh and uh, you know that you know we we had a good year then in championship because we, we really kind of gave us that confidence that we can you know compete with the best and um, at the end of the day winning winning is a habit it doesn't matter and, and losing is a habit also um, and you know, if if you if you're winning, uh, it doesn't matter who you're winning. If you're winning games, you'll always go confident uh, into a game. But then the vice versa can be said about losing. If you're losing games and you're losing tight games, then you know when there's ten minutes left, you're a point up, two points up. You almost can sometimes close in on yourself and saying, wondering if if we're going to lose again. And then the opposite can happen um, with confidence. So if anything, it gives you confidence. Um, and I'm sure Rotter Aird will go into this very confident this weekend. Um, but as I said, like there's a lot of those teams, as Mara said, there's pressure on them too because they will know, like, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure the second round fixtures, but if some of those teams have a Kerr Finn or a Michael, uh, Mike Cullen or a Mount Bellew in the second round, you don't want to go into your third round after two losses. So, you know, there is... There's a lot of teams in this, during this weekend that will really want to get that two points on the board. Um, and if anything, not lose the game anyways. Um, you know, because even, even the last few years, some teams that drew games, that point is huge. Um, and it can give you a, you know, a bit of momentum also. So um, it is going to be a fascinating weekend. But there is, as Mara said, some teams really will be targeting this weekend to get two points on the board. The third game, uh, Kalan and Berna, Saturday, half five, Pier Stadium. Is, is this a derby now for you, Mars? Um, I suppose, good question. Um, well, so Jared Butler, who's gone into Clan, would have been just a, a stalwart of Barna for years. He's a really good underage coach. His son is actually involved in the, uh, the senior side as well. Um, so from that perspective, like, was there, was there ever, as soon as, I, I can actually remember saying it to a friend of mine, as soon as I heard Jared was going to Clan, I said, well, we'll get them for a show in the championship anyway. Like, there was nothing... Uh, Nothing sure. So I suppose in that respect, maybe uh, it is like it wouldn't be as, as huge degree of history between the clubs and um and I think you know from a yeah, clan perspective. So I don't I tell us this question is I don't know, Paul. I haven't really thought about it that way anyway. And just with that they wouldn't have played as much in terms of like one of the reasons why the likes of Baron and even ourselves in Spittal because we play in the Comortus. So you know you're 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 almost guaranteed to be playing each other if it's it could be league, but also there's an added element of 
you know, playing in the Comortus and, um, you know, there's like, for example, we played Barna this year in the Comortus and we got to the, we played um, Mike Cullen and played Little more in the final. So it's kind of like three to a semi-final or quarter-final semi-final. It does add that extra probably competitiveness rather than I would feel it's more competitive than a league game. Um, so that's probably one of the reasons why like Glannon wouldn't be uh, in the Comortus. Um, so you probably wouldn't be, but that's not me trying to say there's a rivalry either. So. <laughs> <laughs> But Morris, for Berna, like you, you were talking about the significance of the trophy, um, like I only realised after you were hearing the interview with Dave Donnellan, the manager, after you did win that Division 2 title, like Berna's first ever trophy at senior level. I know, it's, yeah, it's uh, kind of bonkers for a club who've had like a, a reasonable degree of success, or I've been a senior club for a long stint, and I remember the, my first year playing uh, adult football was 2014, we got to a County semi final, we're beaten by Michaels. Like, that. but yeah, it's just, it's kind of mad when you, when you think about that perspective. And I suppose from a from a close perspective, Paul, like there was a huge, a couple of very significant beats along the way this year. Um, I think, you know, Keen Hernan made his senior debut, senior championship debut for Galway, and has now played the most minutes of any footballer for Barna at senior level ever. Um, I think maybe only two Barna footballers had played for, for senior for Galway before that. Um, so that, that was a huge addition. Sean Fitzgerald got in for the the, the last game, obviously, and uh, I thought was was absolutely excellent. So just obviously just three three of the senior panel who are currently involved with uh, Galway. The league, as you say, went went reasonably well. Um, like and there's a lot of small things like this. There's fine margins along the way in all this kind of stuff. Like it was a, a dog of a league final, which you kind of eked out a, a two point win, chalk it down. As I mentioned, the semi final against Carlshire and the man sent off in the first half, so it kind of clicks. Uh, that way, that Comortis game that Sean is talking about, that went to extra time. You know, that it's, it's these a lot of these things are really, really fine margins. So, uh, I, I wouldn't put a huge amount of stock in that either. But it was like look for the clubs. There's no getting away from it. It was yeah, it was a particularly important day. Have you done everything different this year? Because if you look how the championship ended last year, it was a significant hammer and handed down on the final day. To now, like there seems to be momentum. There seems to be. Probably within your own camp, a bit of expectation this year. Well, I, I would say on that team of like of five like that, that and a down game with the greatest respect to I just think it was like it was you know it was a Tuesday night in Ballinasloe though after a very difficult weekend for the club to be dragged across town when you've nothing to play for. Um, I, I, look, it's nobody's fault. It's like it was just like uh, uh, like a desperately sad story that they, and the game ended up being played on a on a Tuesday and I don't know how tuned in you could be for a game when there's nothing major on the line from a from a Barnet perspective. But the big issue from from the club last year just generally was injuries. Like it was just like it's it's crazy. It'd be very interesting to see if you compared the team from this year how many didn't play at all for in chapter last year. Keen Harden is the obvious example. Like to have Keen Eady as well, wasn't it? Then and Jack Eady, yeah. Um and, and, and look I mean you know the two of them have had their their struggles this year too but just to see them both back and fit and playing football is is massive, like is is huge. So from that perspective, I think it's it's great. There's also been a huge injection. You know, a lot of young, very young talented players starting to really come to the fore now. Um, like I, you know, Aaron Cavanaugh is a guy who I just I can't speak highly enough about. He's just such a good man marker. He is is he's a dog. Like he's 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 a total dog, but he just nothing seems to phase him. Um, I think he's a really important addition from that perspective. So I wouldn't say like I wouldn't say so. No, I just think. Going back to first rounds, I think you know, Bar ironically, Barron's best performance last year was their first round against Sotel when, um, like she we left a lot of chance behind them, but we're you know, right in that game, and then suddenly it's left aside from there. So, I, I do think that's the significance of a weekend like this is that Barron probably in that bracket that I'm talking about this season could go one of two ways, and um, it just so happens they're going up against a really talented clan team, like they're back unbelievably talented middle eight, a team who've got a proven track record, record at senior level. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, just like it's it's a really formidable challenge to get over the line. But for both these teams, I think there would be a huge there's a huge carrot in that what a win against either her for Baron or for Clannan would mean on Saturday. And, and for Clannan as well, Sean, they've always been there thereabouts. Um, two huge players for them this weekend are, are going to be the Sweeney's along with John Heaney. Yeah, and also um, uh, Keen Fallen um, would be you know if, if he, he's. You know, probably I don't know if he you could say if he goes under the radar or not, but he he's uh, especially in senior football, and you can see even Conor Flaherty with um, with uh, Claire Galway last year. You know, if you have a target man that you know and has good pair of hands and the, the balls stick, 
Um, and you know he's that kind of player that he's explosive and you know that's if you have those kind of players or one or two of those players like that you know that get the ball take his man on either win a free or put it over the bar you know they're they're invaluable senior um, and then you have the likes the Sweeney's um, you know Ed and Murray also you know they do there's there's definitely um, talent there um, it always feels like Clannan though like it's it's they're one of those teams like it's kind of like just, I don't know if it's stalwarts or they seem to always have kind of a, a similar team or, and you know, they have one or two lads coming through, I'm sure, but it, it does always feel like they're one of those teams that are just, you know, been around for years and years and they're just so effective at what they do. And just just when you think, you know, oh, this year maybe they're they're struggling, they seem to kind of almost do better those years. And when you're not expecting anything from Kalanin, it's almost, that's when they're dangerous, I feel. So it is going to be uh, interesting um, I'm sure they're going to try to get, like any, any team, try to get all their players together now and um, target this first game and uh, go from there. But it, it's it's a hard one to call, if if, if I'm being honest. I, I, I kind of have a little fancy for Barron in this one. Um, just again, with the momentum from the league, lads coming through, injuries coming back. Um, and it is a huge, but sometimes even it gives lift for lads to see someone on the county team doing well, you know, see Keen Hernan, you know, starting and knowing that he's in, on your team will li give lift. I don't know, you know, I can test that more. It's about even training and stuff like that. Like, but it does give lift to lads around. Like, you know, we often had it with, you know, Finton, you see lads looking up to Finton and um for years and, um, and then, you know, that they come and back. That gives, and and that gives you lift seeing Killian and Karan. Of course, of course it did. Like one of the great, like it was great seeing him and especially a young lad from the club and it gives a lift for, you know, for everyone. And, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, he's getting high quality training also. I'm not saying he wouldn't get it with us, but of course, if you're playing at a county level and getting marked by the likes of Sean Kelly, he's going to bring him on, you know, a huge amount. And then he can bring those um, standards back to training with us and drive the standards even more and things, you know, um, because there are certain things that you wouldn't accept um, when you're brought into a county team and, you know, that feeds into the club then and then you drive on other players and then you're looking at, you know, young lads that want to be training with the likes of Killian now because he's playing senior Galway and it's just that kind of infectious feel for the whole, I wouldn't even say just team, I'd say club, you know, you see the young lads under 13s, you know, we had a great... Um, win last year with our under 13s I think it was the first time ever our club have won a county at A level and to do a great bunch of lads coming through and then you know for them to be looking at the likes of you know Killian playing for Galway seniors it's a huge impact and uh, definitely um, it affects people around the team but also the club in general Yeah no, it definitely seems like it has a, a massive impact um, and just terrific to see Killian and Carol get minutes this year for the Galway seniors as well just then, um, to finish as we uh, the two groups in Group One, um, we looked at the first game in Kenny Park on Saturday, Anna Down versus St James's. Um, bars for my own club, Anna Down, there's been a lot this year that obviously went on. Um, obviously they have Barry Donnelly and he prepared it as coach. Just interested to get your view here. Alan Glynn's come in as coach. Is that uh, confirmed? Yeah, yeah. I was wondering. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. It's confirmed now. He's been in there for the last two or three weeks. That's can things all automatically turn around in that short of a period now. Um, when you consider with Anna Down, like the, the coach was departing, there was there was a bit going on, they didn't fulfill the relegation uh, league final. Um, but they do seem now to have everyone back that is available. Yeah, I yeah, I think so too. I think it's it's not more so. It's it's not change for the sake of change, Paul. Like it has to be a, a you, you has to be so, you recruiting something positive. But a guy like Alan, I think, is a I think it's a massive addition. Like I think it's uh, you know, uh, anybody go back to this to the podcast we a couple of weeks ago will will attest to how good a coach he is um, and how good a sense he has of of the of the county, like of of, of goal generally. So I think yeah, it's a, it's a it's a huge addition. Does every like ironically when you look at the group, there's still every chance that like you know would you rule out. I don't know, getting back to exactly where they were last year. I don't think so either. Um, and I think you can, to a certain extent, you know, this is this is the thing about the league. Like you can take it for what it is. So from certain clubs will take the success they got out of it and they'll bank that and try and build it. But for other clubs, you can just dismiss it as league is league, and you can park all the stuff went on during it and around it, and uh, yeah, and just you know get like three or four weeks of really solid training, and suddenly you come absolutely hopping into into championship. So I wouldn't. 
from what everything you hear, I wouldn't put too, too huge amount of stock into what happens. Um, what what happened during the league? I think uh, I, I, Alan is a yeah has a huge addition for for, for Alan Down. So I I think there, I wouldn't I wouldn't if, if your question is how much of a worry would that be to me? Not really. Like what went on went on, and you just kind of you park it and move on. Would you would you feel they'd be able to park it, Sean? Um, yeah, and again, uh, something like um, Alan Flynn coming in will be a huge lift to the team also because it's like, okay, lads, fresh start, new coach, one of the best around, and they'll be buzzing at training, and you can do a lot once they kind of, you know, once they have their fitness worked on, and again, it, it'd be hard, the only thing that would be hard to build in three weeks would be fitness. You know, a lot of the teams would have to have their um, foundation of fitness now um, over the last few months, and now... Um, Three weeks would be plenty of time to work on certain things for James's. And, you know, as Mara said there, one thing about Alan, it's not that he only focuses on his team. He has such knowledge about, you know, all teams, how they play, how uh, players on other teams. And then, you know, he will be looking at James's um, and, you know, uh, James has have a few young lads coming through, and um, you know the likes of Sam O'Neill, you know that was called in with the the, the seniors and Jack Folan, um, also there another young lad coming through. But um, I think that James is it's it's all about you know Paul Conroy and even Johnny Duane would be huge, um, a huge addition again back with them. Um, so, um, and you know Alan Glynn will will or Alan Flynn will know that and yeah. You know, Glenn, yeah. Yeah, he, he'll make sure that he, uh, he'll uh, target those and not let, you know, Johnny Duane centre-back is one of the best playmakers I've seen. He played us recently in the league, like, and he was just spraying ball left and right. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting. I feel like Anna Down, if they, you know, the likes of, you know, Comer, I'm not sure if he's back. Um, yeah, or back. Fit. So if he's back, you know, again, Comer, in addition to, if, again, similar to Kelly, like if he was playing this weekend, you know, he'd be one of the most dangerous players in Crow Park, never mind playing, um, you know, for your local club. So again, Comer is huge addition. Uh, there'll be other players coming back, I'm sure. And with, you know, with, with a few weeks done under Alan Flynn, I'm sure they'll fancy their chances. They'll park what happened um, and they'll go from there. Um, and, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting first round. Yeah, it's obviously there. Alan Glenn, the goalie minor manager, he's went in with um, Anna Down this year in the last three or four weeks. And two players I expect have really big years for Anna Down this year. Andy Two Key Collins is uh, Jeremy and Dolly. Um, they've definitely shown. But they're just, they just seem to have a bit of a balance this year. Like when you consider, you know, Paul Conroy and Johnny Duan and Owen Kincannon, which they will be reliant on. But then you, you throw in two or three of the goalies that yeah. involved Mars. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think that's in terms of Egan and Sam O'Neill, and that's the yeah, that's that's what boys the club, Paul. Like that, it, when you see, I you know I see it in my own club. Like when you see young players coming, it just really does it provides a huge lift. And uh, I think we all saw how good Sam O'Neill was for this year. It was all fairly, it was well flagged and expected that he'd be pulled in with the their senior panel after that. So I think yeah, I think to, just the lift they get off that. Barry Downey went in there as manager as well. I think is interesting. Um, that's another kind of fairly shrewd recruitment too. So yeah, like you know, as much as and are trying to park what went on in the the league, I'd say James is just trying to, to put to bed what happened in last year's championship. And they did it. Like they finished. You know, they, did they finish top of three A in the end? I think they did. Um, yeah, well, um, no, they lost. They actually lost the league semi final. I think there was at the final to Kirvin second team. So they probably want to park that too. Yeah, no, no. Look, I mean, I think from a league campaign, purely from the fact that you got to, uh, you got the wins on the belt, got that development, got a bit of football into some of those twenties. The fact that those lads, the exact same thing that Sean has talked about with with Killer and Curran, like you would have a lot of the exposure for the twenties that they would have got too. So, yeah, from James' perspective, I think again, it's another thing. It's kind of, it's a really, you know, a win for either club this weekend, Paul. And you're saying, you know, like well, the, the world is our oyster here now. You're, you know, where is the seed? And I think you, you absolutely hop on it. We've put to bed. Whatever we we need it to, and and we move on. So this, I, I think, this is a a huge significant game for both clubs. How do you see it going, lad? Um, I don't know for me anyway. Yeah. So again, you know, uh, depending on who who they have again, but I I think you know Alan um or Alan Glenn um being there and giving them a bit of a bit of extra. Um, but you know St James is uh, at the same time Johnny Duane being back. You know I think it's going to be a very tight game. But you know I think St James will target that, and I'm also going to go for St James's. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And then the final final game um, in that group is on uh, Saturday in Pierce Stadium. Um, it's back to the double header with Clannan and Berna. Do have Milltown coming up um, against Letcher Moore. Um, I find, find this one a difficult one to call, uh, to be honest, uh, Mars. Yeah, uh, def- like, me too. I think two clubs again in that bracket of um, like talking about missed opportunities. I think Milltown would have um, that that day that you're talking about the Barnes final game basically end up doing them out of a, um, a quarterfinal game. So they're, like, they're, and they, they're, you know, would they have? I think they would find their chances in that quarterfinal too. Like I, I have to say, so um, they're a club who could carry huge, whatever you want to call it, want to right that wrong from from last year and, and kick on again uh, in championship. Let the more another interesting one, like another club who um, I think maybe could have struggled at times during the league. And again, you can kind of park that and take it for what it is. Um, two clubs as well that I, I do I do have to, like, it's very similar analysis to what we said in the last game. Like th- th- this this game could set the, end up setting the tone for for how the year goes. So um, this, I, this for me is the hardest game to call this weekend, I think. I just, I, like you can be two and four and two, it's just two teams who could go right down to the wire. But um, I suppose... Given that it should be, it should be busy entertaining anyway. Yeah, you have Aiden Valley here, who's over Lecture Moore, previously involved with Curve Inn. You have Justin Burke, who involved with Curve Inn in yeah. the town coaching ticket. So, two club men coming up against each other as well. Here's some. Yeah, and uh, you know, think about Lecture Moore. Um, I'm not sure. I think Ma- Matthew uh, Borred and Oshin McDonald, who are, um, I'm not sure if they're away or not uh, in America or if they're back. So, again, it's one of those. Um, it's probably there's certain teams that would, you know, that the strength and depth with one or two players away that you know that they find it harder to replace. But um, one thing about it's more they've a lot of young lads coming through, and you know there's a lot of pacey players, um, and we found we found that, and we played them in the Comortes, uh final, um, and um, they bet us in that. So um, a lot of pace, well organized, um, and then um, you know with Milltown. They're going to be interesting also uh, to see, you know, where they're at. Um, you know, they, they, they seem to be very lucky, unlucky last year. Um, you know, they, they started off very strong, um, but probably just faded then uh, into the latter uh, stages of the group. So, again, it's one of those, we've mentioned it ar- already, it's one of those games that both teams will fancy it, and, but both teams will really want to target it uh, to get two points on the board. Um, and, um, again, you know, if it, Sneaky feeling for little more. I think they have um, a bit of momentum themselves. Um, uh, after you know they they've won the they won their uh, league final and um, they won the Comortes. Um, you know they did they did well down at the national competition. They have a few young lads coming through. So again, you know they have they have a certain amount of momentum. Also, now granted that you know there was um, was Division Four B. You know so they're they're too strong really to be there anyways, regardless. But. Um or um or sorry, it was a three, it was a division three B or I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. There's so there's so many divisions now really it's hard <laughs> to keep up. Uh, <laughs> but definitely I think they, they have a bit of momentum anyways. And as I said, you know, if it's if you're in division three or two, sometimes winning is winning, like and it gives that momentum and it gives lads chance chances to uh to perform. So um I have a sneaky feeling for a little more on this one. Is Warren Joga Player for Leicester more years on that could have a really big championship because, like, going by his underage career, he's he's definitely an exciting player. Yeah, and again, it's one of those like young guys that been he's been coming through. He's probably been there a few years now, and they're they, they, they'll be expecting a lot from him. But um, while it's important, see, again, in our time, it was probably you know we were under twenty ones, and then we went so the, you know adapting to senior level wasn't probably you had that extra year, but now it's under twenties, and I think it does take that extra little time, maybe for you know three to four years. Um, you, you know the pace is so much quicker. You know the physicality, and you know underage. You know there tends to be much more space. You can even see, you know, um, a lot of the underage games that, like, um, you know, that there is a lot of space. So it does take time to adapt. Um, and you know will be interesting. He's been there a few years now. Um, and you know I'm sure that it's more be hoping that he'll have a big summer ahead of him. With that as well, Mars Milltown are always a team. You know you're kind of going to get a hard game off. Um. They, like they have brought through the likes of Jack Carano, Manny, and Ian Costello, and then yeah, you do have these players who, the older, more experienced players who are just ready to go to war anytime they play. 
stalwarts, yeah, like, like, yeah, and like just like Karen Martin, like, yeah, just complete and utter stalwarts, like, and guys who will shoot the lights out consistently, you can, you can nearly bank in it. Um, I like to say, Paul, like, that you know, you touching it there at the, the top. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing to see, like, what those car fin teams achieved in Galway football, but also uh, nationally was was remarkable. And I think it's a good thing to see that now be spread. Like, it's remarkable when you look across the board, the amount of lads who are involved in those car fin teams to now, right from. Justin Burke and Mike Farrer is in one of the now, Murph with my, my call in. Um, you know, you go up to uh, Gary Moore and you see Fitzy and um, Kim Fitzgerald and, uh, and Kim McGraw up there. Um, I know I'm leaving Dave Morris in with the, the, the Galway Hurlers this year. Like, I'm trying to leave loads out there, but I think that's a great thing. Like, I think you tapping into that expertise and that coaching it will only work wonders um, and to see that spread around the, the county. So, yeah, I think that was another really good addition. I think I, I, just from a coaching perspective, I think it has the county in good stead to see that be that be spread, and um, and yeah, like I'm sure Milton will get a huge lift out of it. Yeah, and even with that, you have uh, most of the backroom teams from the minor and under twenties are all involved with clubs as well, which is uh, great to see. But Mars, just uh, Sean's mentioned there, he fancies Lesher more. Who do you fancy yourself? Uh, I'd say Milton. Okay, so that game. Um, is in Pierce Stadium as we mentioned on Saturday. There, uh, all the eight games that take place. Uh, you never gave your pick for for Ben and Clannan, Paul, did you? Ben and Clannan, I didn't know. It's um, a difficult one. I do expect Ben though um, to get through it this weekend. Um, momentum behind their side. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, as we mentioned, uh, there are the eight games in the Galway Senior Football Club Championship. We have we have this preview available on our podcast as well as the power rankings um, from this week. But that's all we have time for on our podcast today. Thanks a million to Sean and Morris for coming on. Cheers.